and welcome to the Zooming Who's podcast, and I'm your host, Austin Husky. And I'm Kurt Ann Sourpuss. And want to say a happy birthday to Max or Grey Nugget. Happy birthday. Who is the artist who drew us this art, intro art yep, thingamajig intro art. that I absolutely love. Yeah. So, happy birthday, Floofs. Hope it's a good one. Use it on every episode, don't you? Yes, I, I've I've been using it since the third episode since uh, we've since we've used it. So it's a mainstay. It's a mainstay until another art comes in the way. Uh -huh. So really, and then you'll rotate between them. Right. Him. Since I only have one fan art, I will only use that one. Uh -huh. But if let's say I get another one, I will alternate. Uh, that way it's different here and there. Yeah, and both people get, you know, the recognition. Right. And then the more art I get, the bigger the the bigger the bigger interval, but still will represent. Great way to get people's art out there. Yeah. Essentially free advertising oh, through, yeah. uh, through us. We're not getting anything out of it. Nope. We're just helping get their name out yep. more than anything. That's awesome. I love that. Oh, yeah. So... Happy birthday, Max. Happy Hope it's birthday. a good one. Hope it's everything you've wished for. So, what are we going to talk about today? Oh my gosh. Work? Or what happens after you get home from work? Do I want to talk about that? Do I? Do you want to talk about that? You, well, so, what do you do after work? I wank. Especially after a really bad day. I wank. I wank one out. I think a lot of people do that. Sometimes after... I wank a couple out. I know people that wank during work and... Uh, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'd be gone for an hour. Where the hell are, is Joe? He already took his lunch. He already took his other two breaks. Where is he? Which, they're... Uh-oh. Yeah. See, I tell you celery is bad. This the ends. You have I to don't know. At the end. See, cat, I, I, I told you why I don't. <laughs> so yeah, so I think, I think a lot of people play with themselves after work, mm -hmm. both male, female, and other. Yes, everybody. I think work is so frustrated, which work is not celebrated in this country compared to other countries where. Work to us is a means to survive. It's not meant to bring any enjoyment unless you found a company that you really truly enjoy and fights to keep for the rest of your lives. And not even the company so much, but if you enjoy the job that you're doing within that company, you know, more power to you. Right. Like me, for instance, for the most part, I enjoy my job. It's just those days where I'm getting psychologically fucked with by my superior. That's me every day. That's where she's got this, I'm just kidding, don't ever take anything I say seriously mentality. I mean, she says that constantly. Don't ever take anything I say seriously. But then when you, when she has something that she does want to get across that she's being serious about, it's like, how can you differentiate the being serious to kidding? It's a mind fuck. My, my boss is of the impression that he is better than anyone, even though his artificial hips and soon to be artificial, I think knees or ankles, I'm not sure which. So, he, so he'll become Darth Vader in time anyway. Um, however, Darth Vader was cool and he was framed. However, spoilers. Spoilers. If you've not seen Star Wars, I can't tell I cannot help you at all. But anyway, my boss thinks he is the hardest worker there is in my department and thinks he is absolutely god on earth that without him there nothing would get done, which honestly, he takes off for vacation and personal days and we get along just fine without him. In mm -hmm. fact, better. Same and with my, this same with my supervisor. 
so the lead shipper is, is gone this week, next week, and next, or the, or the following Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And he keeps asking me every damn day if I need any help, if I'm over overwhelmed, and my answer to him every day is, nope, nope, I am doing perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Nothing concerns me. He worries way too much about the stuff that he thinks we're too stupid to do, yet we've, we've gone through a whole week without Charles is what we like to call him slim which he is not very slim but we call him slim anyway um actually it's it's an amazing day when both charles and ryan are gone now mm -hmm. not not just ryan gone it becomes more quiet it's even more quiet when charles is not there because he's another loud mouth that gets annoying after a while love that um so we have two loud annoying people at work and my boss likes to take half days off uh, without even using his personal time or his vacation. He, he, he makes up the rules all along. He, he's so corrupt, and so is this, this company anyway. Yeah. But he is amazed throughout the whole week that me and my friend and co-worker, Tony, have been able to, come, to go home clean every night, despite the when low say, level... When you say clean, what do you mean? Absolutely nothing is left over for the next day, meaning okay. everything went. Just to be clear. Ev everything is out the door by 4 o'clock. So you got everything done you needed to get done. Yep. And nothing was left over. Okay. And for some reason, he's surprised that, that we left clean every night, which to me does not worry me one bit because I've been a shipper for two years. Been a shipper boxer in my shipping department for two years and I like to say if I picked up a skill from this company so far I have become a quite competent and quite um, what's the word not comfortable I am definitely comfortable with what I'm doing confident. confident I'm a very competent and confident shipper that ships both domestic North American and international shipments from Ooh, yes. anywhere international hoosk and the only time I've ever worried was Monday morning trying to do a DHL shipment to Thailand, which is the dumbest thing. Not so much where it's going, it's just the numbers on DHL is so stupid. Um, I don't care for it. It's not so much the process. I get the process. I understand the process. It's relaxing. Shipping yeah. to me is relaxing. And you are the one who's making money in this company. However, it's the, oh, you have to do a commercial invoice. Well, for a split moment, I totally forgot, not, to, not knowing how to make an in, invoice. I make them every day. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's the idea of, wait a minute, you have a part that costs $24.94. However, $0.94 cents is a joy. Not sarcastically, with, when it's a uh, when the decimal point is at the uh, at the hundredths, so you got tenths of a cent, then you got hundredths of a cent, which is literally the ninety-four cents. Then there's moments where you deal with the thousandth of a cent, fractions of a cent, which is a stupid thing to do in this company, and they yeah. do it anyway. Why? And you know what? To uh, Friday, I discovered there's a ten thousandth of a cent denomination. That point splitting hairs. Yeah. Round it up. Exactly, and that makes my job a lot more compl much more complicated. Because you know why? Invoice systems on company websites for DHL and other international packaging firms mm -hmm. or postal services, they don't accept anything more than hundredths of a cent. I knew you were going to say that. And you know what? My, my company is a jerk that does thousands of a cent, but the few occasional times where, oh my goodness, ten thousandth of a cent. It's so stupid. That's retarded. And you know what? They will not make any effort to round that up. But when I do the calculations, it does not add up to the total value which if you do international shipping, everything must match between what's on your ticket and what's on the document. Right. If nothing matches, 
Your shipment gets held off at a customs a agency in that country, and nothing goes until <laughs> you fix it. Wow. Which you have to fix somehow, which you can't. So I found out a way to do that by just making my own commercial in invoice by scratch, mm -hmm. and that actually fixed the I issue. And other than that, the rest of my week went perfectly fine, and my boss was worried I wouldn't get anything done. He's a chode. He's, he's a total chode. But you know what? Even before Charles was gone uh, two weeks before, so not this past Friday, but the past or the previous Friday, he's like, hey, do you want to do some shipping? You know, this way, uh, um, if you got any questions, you can ask Charles. No, no, that's not necessary. I'm more than confident to do my own job that I do not need to do a preliminary day of doing everything in one day right. that I'm going to be doing for the next two weeks and a half. Yep. I do not need it. So I ended up doing what I needed to do Friday anyway without being in shipping. And only being in shipping when it's only necessary because three three people in shipping is apparently a waste in, in my company. Of course, um, if my company were short of handed, we're so short handed, we, we're doing... Everyone's at least doing the job of two people, and me specifically, I'm doing the job of five people at the same time every day. And since Charles has been gone, I'm actually doing the job of six people, which is stupid. But you know what? It's normal. Any job after this one is going to seem so easy, because mm -hmm. if I get put to a workstation to do one thing, I'm going to shit my brains out just in terms of simplicity of my next future job that I will be doing the job of only myself and what I need to do instead of more and more and more people. But my boss this whole past week was surprised. Wow, I'm, I'm really surprised uh, he and uh, Tony uh, got all the job done. What, you were expecting us not to? So this explains why you wank after you get home from work. It's the stupid frustration wanks of I'm not an idiot now, I'm just going to sit in my bathroom and just wank it out in frustration. But you don't just wank. I'm not going to go further in, into that. Too late. No, I, I'm, you I'm have not going to do that. I'm not going to step even lower than I am right now. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, no. Um, but um, the frustrations at job... Encourage me to wank in No Nut November, which to me does not exist. Yeah. Because you know what? I have never done a No Nut November. I thought it was No Shave November. It should be only No Shave November. But suddenly some Christian decided to call it No Nut November, which... Who the hell came up with that? I have no idea. Are they some, insane? Some deprived individual that think... Uh, no, either... sorry. I, I actually follow a lot of caged people on Twitter. Wait, who? People that wear cages. Oh. I can't. See, yeah, if you have the power and control over that, sure, be my guest. Me, November is just another December to me in yep. the world of fapping. Because December is deflated ball sack December. November is another December. Yeah. Um, Some people even give the key away. Oh, f fuck that. Like, so you can't unlock. If someone were to give me a key to their cage and says, I want you to do your worst, big boy, you know what? I can be entrusted with a key, but I'd feel way too guilty to put someone in that situation. Um, yeah, okay, maybe for a weekend if I'm around them. I mean, can you pee? Yeah. I've never really, I've never looked really close, yeah, a, closely at a, a cage. A cock cage has a slit where your pee pee uh, points at, and you can still pee. pee. Um, I mean, people have done it for months. Someone I knew had a cage on for three months. Someone I knew had one on for six months. Oh, God. You know what? I would break the cage. You probably might. My bro my cock would break the cage open. Out of just sheer sheer erection, yep. or sheer erection, it would just crack. So open. it's not so much your size; it's pretty much you're gonna go super cat Hulk, and then you're just gonna destroy the cage. Which I'm, I'm super horny. 
I'm just horny off all the time, but no one's going to put a cage on me because one. I would never have done that to you. No, and. That just seems cruel. And again, I'm not yeah. bashing people that are into it. It's just not for me. It's not for me either. Yeah. If And some, some people really genuinely... Get off on that. Well, not just that, but appreciate cages. And you know what? Hey, I'm I'm happy that you find that sure. amazing. That's that's fantastic. I mean, Captain Spandex that I follow on Twitter that I've found, that I've originally met uh, through Instagram has gotten recently into cages. And he's kind of like, he tried a little bit of everything. He likes getting tied up the bondage like tied up where they literally have rope like tied up like every inch of your body mm -hmm. caging is another thing that he got into now he's getting into what i smell the celery oh, sorry. <clears throat> now he's getting into um being tied up uh and with put, uh, bondage rope yeah with, with and, bondage rope but left in public to just lay there looking helpless. That's funny. And I'm most sorry. Of, I know. <laughs> most of the time. Oh, boy! I know. He, he, don't worry. He likes it. <laughs> 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 most of the time it's in like a remote place where there may be like one or two. It's, it's in a dark and dirty <laughs> alley. <laughs> oh, no! Oh! Hey, you forgot to put the bad dragon toy in his mouth. <laughs> okay, Danny DeVito. So then I got my pieces, okay, and started blasting. <laughs> but I can't see no good, so I miss. <laughs> How do you like your eggs? <laughs> see, yeah. for, see, for me, a cage... You know how I am with, with my balls, because you've dated me for five years. Yes. I'm pretty sensitive with my balls. I'm very sensitive. And for several reasons why. Yeah. Mostly because Vietnam flashbacks and my balls. And for some reason, people like to touch me in public at fur cons and at fur meets like, like some Dragon Ball Z battle move directly to my nuts. I'm not going to get too much into deal, detail with that. Too late. But I had to convince myself when people gave out hugs they weren't going to punch me in the balls. So pretty much special clearance to my balls is like like a level 50. Like you have level 50 clearance to so my PSA, balls. So PSA, don't go for the who's balls. No, yeah, please, please don't because I will run away from you. Legitimately, because I stopped hugging people at fur meets and, and cons for a good two years before I could, just because. Um, yeah, Vietnam flashback and my balls. And they're still sensitive since then. <laughs> to this day. To this day, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like. I don't mind people fondling them. Yeah. But when it comes to putting a ring or a cock, uh, well, <clears throat> cock ring really doesn't do anything for me. No. But like putting a cage around my my balls, no, uh, -uh. no, uh, that just reminds me way too much. And that was like seven, eight years ago, and I still can't get over that feeling. Oh. So anyway. Anyway, don't don't go for my balls. So. Yeah, one of the things, the other thing that I said he got into recently was public display of humiliation, basically. But in remote places where there's barely like one or two passerby, like maybe two hikers going across <laughs> the field, like across the mountain, <laughs> a half a mile or a quarter mile away, and they're like, hey, What's that guy doing over there? Does he need help? He's fine, he likes it. You know what I would love to do if if I knew someone who was into this, I would I, I would on on purpose but by accident stumble upon them, whether literally or just figuratively. Would be funny literally. It says oh hey buddy looks like you're all tied up on oh hold me oh okay I'll be right back. Go go to McDonald's, get a, a combo meal and just put it right in front of them. 
It's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I gotta get going. Enjoy your food and just have it sit there. <laughs> That's just mean. I mean, it's not so much more meaner than someone leaving him there with uh, their cock uh, caged and their uh, bodies uh, tangled with uh, bondage ropes. So I don't know how no, much... No, you left, like, McDonald's fries in front of them? Which go stale after ten minutes. Yeah, oh. True. Yeah. Now, okay, no, that's evil. Their burgers can last a while, but their fries literally go flat like a can of soda. In yeah, like... you can't re even reheat them. They just turn into mush. They... I, have, I have never seen... Normally, the second time you eat food... They look like a limp dick. I like those fries. The ones that are super, super soft and super greasy. I don't. Ugh. Yeah, they have to and have the crunchy bit ones? Of, they have to have a little bit of crisp to them. I like absolutely the very, very crunchy ones. Oh, my God. That's sex. That's why I make my own fries. Actually, your fries are fantastic. Because McDonald's fries disappoint me. Like a limp dick. Like a limp dick. Yeah. You know what? I have an idea. Yes. Let's open a furry fast food joint. Our fries are going to be dick shaped fries. Mm. They're going to be various stages of erection and limp. Okay. And then the disclaimer on the carton says may not actually taste like penis. <laughs> And not to be confused with the taste of penis. <laughs> we can make waffle fries. Waffle fries? We can make cock waffle fries. Ooh, cock waffle fries. There we Just go. Just like the cock waffle um, art. Where he's... We'll have... Where he noms on the, the cock waffle. I love you, cock waffle. Syrup? Syrup? We'll make canine-shaped cock waffle fries. We'll make feline cock shaped waffle fries. We'll uh, make horse but we have to charge ex extra for that because that's twice the length and twice the thickness. And the serving would just be a single cock waffle fry. Yeah, it's like boom, enjoy your food. And then like sprinkle a little bit of garnish on it. I love you cock waffle fry. <laughs> and just explain. Ketchup? I don't remember putting ketchup on this. Um, so then for, now this would of course be an adult place to go to, so there'd be no such thing as a kid's meal, because you know what? We would refuse. Oh God, it would just turn into baby fur. Sorry. Oh no. Again, if you're into that, more power to you, but just not my thing. I would honestly say the adult value meal would certainly just be a piece of cheese. For the furries that cannot afford anything, we'll at least give you a small... You know those chemical cheese? The uh, craft squares? You are one of those those furries that, for some reason, for many, many years, have never kept a single dollar in his bank account. And yet, he comes in and says, "What? Well, what can I afford for, like, 20 cents? Well, well we can give you the sheet of cheese. Deal. Then he lives off of it for a few months. Because that's because that stuff just lasts forever. Oh yeah. But now the toys. Now we're not talking about Hot Wheels, Barbie, uh, different movies, whatnot. No, we're no. going to go straight on with furry adult toys, sponsored by Bad Dragon, Twin Tails Creations, and. Um, the Twisted Bard, or I forget exactly. There are so many other companies out out there. It says, so what kind of toy did you get? Oh, I got a little teeny weeny. What did you get? Ah, oh, big dog toy. I can see that. But at that point, you're like asking for like a hundred dollars and a burger, fry as a drink, but you get a really nice to a toy with that. Yeah. Actually, at that point, you're just literally paying for the toy, and that just comes on the side. The food is extra, is, is is free, basically. Right, at that point. You know, Bad Dragon has something there. Oh, yes. Mm. Get this nice Swiss Reuben melt with a side of dick. Not just any kind of dick, the fun silicon dick. Yeah. 
that you could probably use on you while you eat your sandwich. Probably. There is going to be so many bare asses at our stores. You know how there's a coat rack? It's just, it's just a pants rack. I'm going to see it. Come for the food. Stay for the sex. Come in for your food. Stay longer because you're going to want to have fun. Yep. Does that mean there'll be like public sex going on in our uh, establishment? Because that could raise health issues. Health, mm. health department would be honest about that. You know what? We'll have an enclosed section called a ball pit. It's just ball gags. Like a play, like a playground. It's a playpen, and then all the sweaty, strapped people with all their lube will just slide on in, directly into a butt, with their toy inside. Can you imagine Ooh. all the? Could you imagine all the hardest uh, puppy furs that would be there? I'd be fine with that. Me too. Be more than fine with that. They can eat a burger and have a dick. When is this going to open? I, you, you know what? Uh, 2022. Because after this this pandemic, you know what? It's time to go balls wild. Yeah. As you rip apart a celery. Like a penis. Oh, no. If a penis could snap in half that easy, mm. I don't think anyone would have sex. For the fear of snapping a dick. I had a break. Recently. Aww. A one snap. One little... I mean, it's the idea that it... Because actually, a sign that the sponge cartilage pops a bit is a sign that it did fracture, but it's easily healable. It's just a full-on, full-through break. Like, mm. it literally snapped. Like, your dick is making a right-hand turn, yeah. and you're following it from its point. Like this. Yeah. I've seen dicks like that online. It's like, oof. This man either has some Literally. calcium buildup on his dick that bend his dick like that, or it's a penal fraction, which yeah, I had which I'm sure you could fix. It's just naturally, it doesn't always heal straight again. Or it, 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 it will actually heal up on its own. It's just it may not be as straight as it was before. I just don't know how you would get it to straight to heal up that way. That sounds a lot like this. Ugh. That's a sorry steak. Now, all right, well, let's, let's dive into the subject. Anyone could kind of break their dick if they're being a bit too rough, meaning they're absolutely going full on out. Unless you are at the right angle going at a good enough speed that's not going too fast but got a good enough momentum what are we talking about set okay you know what it's a show it's gonna happen anyway but I've seen videos online mm -hmm. where the guys with the longest dick possible I see will snap the most before a guy with a stump mm -hmm. because you know what the stump he has robustness on his side he may have just the chode stump however he is like a Volvo of the dick world where he mm -hmm. can just keep going and going and going and then explode yep. length can be always be great however you really have to worry about if you're long and thin if you're long and thick you have less of a chance but you're still not far away from it snapping yeah. from stress but if you are long and thin I really hope you're not rough with sex because it's not the partner you're gonna hurt penetrating inside you have a higher likely chance of hurting yourself than your partner just because potentially snapping your dick in half I've seen porn stars um, Break it's like penis. when they get a little bit soft and there's a little bit of give that it can really happen and genuinely, it's when they're laying down and the, the bottom is on, on top. top of them. Yeah. That's when it happens. That's when it mostly happens, actually. And for an anyone. You're welcome for the image I just painted, by the way. 
And the number one, oh god, oh. The video you showed me, which you showed me a lot of weird videos, and you still do, which I do. it gets interesting, and I start to swirl into a corner, hiding from the world afterwards. But there's a picture of two guys absolutely going at it mm -hmm. in that same position of the top in the situation was laying down yep. and the bottom was uh, rail is getting railed by him by sitting in his lap. Mm -hmm. And on the upstroke, he goes all the way out and then all of a sudden, as the guy goes down, halfway in his dick, breaks kind of like the back on a ship or the back on a bridge and it's not pretty and that's when i realized oh so that's how that that happens mm -hmm. it's when you do a lot oh yeah pretty much an alignment doggy style is pretty safe compared to doing it that way because you're not fighting someone's gravity i don't care what the position if you well, pull all the way out between thrusts you are at risk Unless your average length, then you got even a lesser chance. But yeah, if you pull out between thrusts. And you are six inches and plus, I would say even... Even if you're off by just a centimeter. Well... you try to re-enter. Yeah, the... See, I'm not going to... I am not judging by length and whatnot, but I've rarely seen... People who are six inches and shorter, which again, not shaming on the people who are long in, in, on on this planet, but also will encourage people who are short and say, you know what, you're not, because as long as you got two hard inches, you will absolutely widen the hell out of anyone, yeah. and they're going to feel it, and they're going to make you feel like you're a horse. Because really, the two first inches is really all that you need. Because that's all that you feel in your ass, is two inches. Beyond that, you can't feel anything. It's much like the vagina. Two inches is all that you need. Sadly, that's a mystery to me. Yeah, I have I've... very little vagina experience. Yeah, I've... You have more vaginal experience than I do. And that was like years, 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 years ago. And that's only happened like once or twice. And I can't even remember with who anymore. Probably for a good reason. I don't know. But anyway, snapping a dick is like always a big worry. Although I don't think I really have that much of an issue. I don't think... If anything, a popping sound is still... Maybe not normal, but it is normal in the sense of sex. Yeah. It's when you feel an absolute... I, I, well, I would know I've never had a dick snap. I'm talking about an actual full-on, full-width fracture, not just a pop. Because a pop just means, okay, you need to take it... You need to take it easy. You may need, need to take a break. Let it heal for a day or, or two, and then... There we go, and then scare o over. When you have a full-on break, uh, you've got long road issues of what you can do with sex afterwards, because often enough, rarely does a break actually heal straight. And as, as you mentioned earlier, you once played with a guy many moons ago who had a long penis. You're talking about maybe 10 inches, 12 inches? Mm. Very, was, very long dick. I was like 17, 18, too. Naughty poos. But anyway, you mentioned... Naughty underage poos. Oh, my God. This was when I got snuck into the clubs in downtown Chicago. Oh, my God. So, you mentioned about hanging out with a guy with an incredibly long dick that oh, yeah. was long. And you thought that with his length... That he could not get hard, but sometimes if you're long enough and you have a break, it's hard enough for the blood flow to actually be constant throughout a dick. Because you can be 12, 14, 30 was... feet long, and you can, you will have, if you have enough blood in your body to make that whole work, an unbroken dick will actually flow, blood flow, a lot more easier and more uniform in one go. 
If your dick broke in any section, blood flow will be altered from that point towards the tip. Just because mm -hmm. it'll be a lot more difficult for blood. See, that's why I hate celery. Yep. And among other things, too, but... Claws. So he was about 10 and a half, 11 inches long. Which is incredible. Holy Almost enough. a foot. I actually... I'm quite glad I'm not that long because a and lot of people. This was soft. Are, this was soft. So he was. So he was. He was a total shower. Yeah. At that point, you have to be. Yep. Which almost, in my personal experience, almost seemed like a curse, instead of a blessing. I would never want to be long and huge because more people would feel more afraid to get topped by you. Yep. Although it's interesting in, in the furry fandom I've known more bottoms with giant huge dicks like soda can size like soda can in width. Yeah. And it's not a it's not a stereotype because you can be top, bottom or switched doesn't matter but it seems that a lot of the bottoms that I do know and it's just a label they have giant masses between their legs yeah. and I've and I've ever asked them have you ever topped anyone like yeah I could but it doesn't in, in, interest me and even their top boyfriends who have bottom tendencies are like hey babe you gotta rail me and it's like nope good luck because some people just don't have an interest in topping at all. And that happens. But it's interesting that... And I get why. There's a lot of pressure. Well, really, it's just what you like. Not just that, though. There's the expectation. You know, you're expected to perform. That's a top. Not true. Most... Most of them that I just tend to ask is like, eh, it doesn't, in, in, it does not interest me enough to do it, so I just don't. And they say, yeah, it's fine by me. No. It's just, it's interesting that some of these huge, giant monsters between legs that I've seen online, which they get impressive. Holy moly. They do. And yet, a lot of them are like, oh, yeah, I I like the penis and the butt. Yeah. But it's like, but look at look at the mighty blood-filled sin sword between your legs. Yeah, it's kind of nice, but, eh. I'd just rather have the penis and the butt. And there so, we yeah, go. this guy, they had the 11-inch dick. Yeah. He literally I would just squeeze it from the base of the shaft just to get um, the upper four inches hard yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And I and I think either either you or I suspected that it's because of his length, which I have a hard time believing because sometimes again a breakage in the uh, penile sponge causes a scar. A healing scar that makes it more difficult for blood to go through. Yeah. It'll still go through, but it's not as willing as it was before as a uniform blood pressure goes in. You have to literally squeeze the meat like a sausage into a skin yep. to get the blood in, and it would not stay hard long enough to do anything. Yeah. Yeah, it, un unfortunately, that might be a sign of a past break, and especially for someone that long, probably had an accident like that at one point. Didn't yeah. you say that it pointed in a weird direction? I don't recall. I was just so in awe of it. You were in awe of his mighty I think at dick that, sword. At that point in my life, at 17, 18 years old, I was like, yep, I definitely like the D. I like to fellas. Because I, I I remember just like holding it and just admiring it. I was just like, 
You're a good penis. <laughs> so then you definitely like the penis. Oh, definitely. So growing up, and this has always been true to me, <sighs> penis is not what I tend to focus on. And I'm you like bi. The, you like the bud. All of my straight friends like the boobs. Yeah. Then my straight friends come to me and say, hey, man, you got to check out these triple Fs. It's like, oh, yeah, that's, I, I guess. They don't get behind the double D, but go ahead. I know there's G's that, that exist or something like that. I don't know. ZZ top and AA bottom. Um, but then there's a picture of this model yeah. with both her boobs and her butt present and they were focusing on her boobs but her butt was amazing and it's like but seriously her ass and like Ugh, why are you looking at her butt well that's kind of where the business end is of things anyway and it is so nice. You know, and boobs I'm, are just the gateway to the rest of the body, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Whereas, for me, it's like, men have a butt, women have a butt, and That's, I can massage both. Butts are nice. It's pretty much like a standard feature you get anyway, is a butt. Yep. Whether if it's got a hole or two, I mean, I, I just like... Like putting my pobs on a butt cheek, yeah. just 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 kind of like massage with my beans. See, I like the and inner... and also the thighs. Yes. The thighs are nice. Yeah, I was just gonna say I like the thighs leading up to the butt. Yes, exact. You are speaking my gospel, sir, of my butt and the thigh gospel. That's why I like watching wrestling. Yes. Because those guys have got great bodies. Oh my God. And their thighs and buttocks are robust. Beautiful. And Especially sculpted. if the butt comes down to where it, where you can see them. Like when you watch an artist draw mm -hmm. and their understanding of anatomy is on point. Mm -hmm. And they literally just draw the different muscle, uh, the different muscles mm -hmm. that exist in every part of the body. When it looks like that, wrapped in spandex... I, my mouth starts watering. I just, 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 just want to grow up and say, you, you have a nice butt, and then I. Just I want to just hug it. Yes. I want to hug it. I want to nuzzle it. I want to ask it its secrets. And I just, just grind on it. Yeah. So anybody out there that wants to, you know, show me their butt. <laughs> <laughs> just putting that out there. Um, I will, I will love it and hug it and feed it. Because it's like. Dick is nice, but Dick is nice. Honestly, the butt and the thighs, as 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 far as a bodily feature that I like the most, mm -hmm. that I like to see, is high on my list of priorities. Yeah. Of that's a nicely sculpted butt. Um, it's like it's like gooch. a Greek. It's like a Greek statue. Yeah, the Just gooch as well. The gooch, yes. The gooch is a very fun part of the body for me, too. Those, those are fun to massage, too. Because yep. they don't expect it, but then they realize, ooh, this is nice. Hard to massage your gooch because you're so ticklish. I, I am ticklish. Many times I think I, I've seen you pop right out of bed <laughs> when we were dating. <laughs> and I tried to massage it, and you just... You were in bed one second, the next minute you were next to the bed. Yeah. Which is leading closer to my balls, which then yes. becomes closer to Dangerously Vietnam. close. Dangerously close. Now, I've been trying to get better with that. But, yeah, it... it uh, that's, a pr that's definitely a work in progress. Yeah. I swear, some of my friends are just evil. Yep. Because uh, yeah, I I I I don't mind a grope, if it's a nice sensual grope, I can enjoy it. I don't like squeezing because you know what? You I know, like to squeeze. I I'm fine with squeezing. Squeeze all you want. You try to get me to to squeeze, but the amount of pain that I go through. Yeah, I did try to get you to squeeze. And I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. I could not do it because the way how I felt, getting 
groped and squeezed aggressively by friends in which really yeah, wasn't really fun too close to home it once you once again it's a very odd thing for me to say but i i'm still trying to get over that and that's still seven eight years ago um some some things i can let go some things i i can get over but some physically is is like yeah i know that way too well and I've been squeezed down there unexpectedly and unwantedly. And eventually I just started avoiding people just because I know they would do that. Because then all of a sudden an entire meet was behind it. Where they finally like, oh, hey, hey, why don't you uh, grow up dusting in, in the nads and like give it a good squeeze. And you know what? Once you've been squeezed dozens of times... A gentle caress of my balls is something I have still yet to get used to. Oh God! But then you, so you try to get me to psych out with my with with your balls and my paws, trying to get me to squeeze. And then at the at the eleventh hour of of when I wanted to squeeze, I still couldn't do it, knowing that you would probably like it. But then I realized this is exactly on the receiving end of what I was at, I can't, I, I can't get myself to do that. Yep. It's something that, that goes against my own experiences that I just refuse to do. Chickened out Fusk. Yep. So what's new with you? Um, job is going okay. I mean, job's all right. I'm still searching, but you're talking about a pandemic economy collapse plus tons of people unemployed i don't expect to get a job immediately but i'm still looking i'm still finding but um i was uh i was told that well if you're gonna find a good job you're gonna have to start looking far and wide and like well the thing is i've talked to a lot of people that moved across the country across worlds for a job opportunity and you know what they all told me it's not worth it in in the end. Uh, oh yeah, you're you're from Ohio. Well, a job in Colorado called and say, hey, we we actually want you on our team. The average person who stays at a job is anywhere from three to five years. You are you gonna say you're gonna go to Colorado for a dream job that you won't stay there longer than three years or five years? Because most people will hit the top of their pay grade after three years. And the, pro the problem with that, too, is it may sound good. The pay rate may sound good from where you're at. Yeah. When you move closer to that area, it's all planned out. So it all kind of balances out. What do you mean? Like the cost of living compared to your, the amount of money you're making. You might potentially be making more money, but the place you may move to may be more cost exactly. of... So it, it may not even be worth it. Someone told me, well, you may need to start looking far away. You, you should always expect to move out from where you live. You know what? I love where I live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would never want to move into a city, but I love this area of my state. I would never move anywhere far. Yeah, it's all planned out. Um, like, so many furs from Wisconsin moved to California back in the day. You know how many of them came back? Nearly all of them but one. Yeah. And they told me and say, yeah, um, in California ten years ago, they moved out to California because they were paying more, and uh, honestly, they were going to make more money than they ever would in Wisconsin, or even Illinois for that matter. I'm sure they and did. you know. And you know what? Those companies canned them because they realized they can pay Californians a lot cheaper now. Yeah. Because Californians over that 10-year period got more desperate and say, we'll take any pay. Then all of a sudden, local IT people, and, and these are all people in IT, so let alone any other well, type of job. Talk to Cooper Tom about IT. That guy has been dicked, and he was in it for eight years with one company, and he got dicked over. And... Yeah, IT might be the future, but that's still not going to say, is it going to be the future? I don't think so. But a lot of these Wisconsin furs that 
moved out to California, living out the dream, Californian dream, and you're getting paid good. And you know what? All of a sudden, Californian businesses are now only hiring Californians now. They don't care to hire people from out of state anymore because you know why? Yeah. Their unemployment rates among native Californians are so high, the, the state government is encouraging their companies based in California to be hiring Californians again at, of course, lower rates than they would other people. And Californians lowered their standards of what they expect to be paid. Mm -hmm. So now Californians are now like willing to take any job so long as it gives them a paycheck. So now all these Wisconsin furries have moved back to Milwaukee. And they said it was a total waste of 10 years. Of course, they made friends there. When they got there, there was no one that they knew. Now they dipped their friends that they knew back in the state. Went to California for 10 years, new friends there, and then moved out. They double dick themselves because now the, their old friends that they knew in the state no longer want to talk to them because they felt they've been abandoned. So not all, only did you have to do that once in California, you'll get to do that again when you move back yep. to meet new friends that to get to know. I really don't see moving out of your region of where you live unless just a new start or you don't know anyone still. Well, you know, the thing about that, the older you get, <clears throat> the harder it is to make friends. Yeah. I have found that. Um, partially because, maybe it's because I can read people. A lot better than I could when I, were young, I was younger. Uh, I might be a little bit tipsy now, so ignore me or pay attention. It's fine. But yeah, I, I've noticed... I can tell when people just want something out of me. Yeah, beyond just being friends. And when they're just, you know, plain, you know, using you for something. Yep. You know, I, they only want something out from you. They want, right. they have something to lust over you, but beyond having a genuine friendship, that's all that they have, ever want is yeah. that one thing, and that's it. And then they kind of cast your side. That's yeah, I, yep. I've been through that plenty of times. Um, the older you get, the more prominent that becomes. And these and, and these were all furries in their early to mid twenties that moved out to California. Now a decade later, now they're in their early to mid thirties. Yep. Now they realize it's harder to make new friends because they've been out of their own league in their own hometown of Milwaukee. Yep. And I, I and I've been told, well, uh, it, you should really start looking out and far beyond. I'm like, I don't want to do that. Um, the Milwaukee, Waukesha, Jefferson and Dane County is really where you need to be in the state. Don't move anywhere else. Um, in Wisconsin, people from up north are moving down here. Yeah. Um, all the jobs are down here. Why, why would I want to move out anywhere else beyond where I am right now? I don't want to move anywhere far than where I am right now. Um, I mean, anywhere, because I do miss my dad. I don't see my dad very often. He's already 25 minutes away from here. Moving away from this location in any direction unless it's going towards Milwaukee County, which living cost-wise, I don't want to. I'm going to be living farther away from my dad than I'd want to, and I don't see him very often. That was even before the pandemic. Now, pandemic is really kind of pissing me off now. Um, I've just been told, yeah, well, you should, you should not ever be af af afraid to move outside your comfort zone. Honestly, it's not so much the comfort zone. It's just there's much more to that than you realize. And in my general area, much of all the good-paying jobs are here. The only other place in the state of Wisconsin that you can find that you can find better-paying jobs is in the Appleton, Oshkosh, Green Bay area, and that's far north than I'd ever want to live in. How far is Oshkosh from here? Uh, two hours. And beyond that, you're among fewer, fewer pe uh, people in the furry sense. There's not many furs that live up there. So I used to know people that lived in Oshkosh. Um, Andrew Marks. Not a furry. Don't know him. Yeah. Madison is 
M Madison is smaller Milwaukee, and it's good for only one thing. High paying job. Is it good to live in? No. It's not worth living in Madison unless you're making it big. If you're making more than 80000 a year, you can comfortably live in Madison and not give a fuck. It's the same with Milwaukee. What's the cost to live in Madison generally? Oh my God, it's just bad. It's, it's just so as, high? It's just as high as Milwaukee, and there is one-third of the people that live in Madison. And in, it's stupid. Um, once you get out of Dane County and Milwaukee County, cost of living is... 25% uh, cheaper outside of those counties alone. It's just, do you want to live in a city? That's that's where they get you. Living in the country is so much cheaper, but around here, there's cities left and right, and there's jobs, there's job op opportunities, and there are more and more plants scheduled to be made in the next... I feel like I should move back to Chicago at this point. Then that means... Well, I mean, um, well... I know people that, that work in downtown Chicago. <laughs> but now think of Milwaukee cost of living, but now multiply that by two. Well, um, good, now you... But if I'm working in downtown Chicago? Say goodbye to your car, because you're not going to oh, need it. I don't need it. I oh, don't yeah. want it. But that means forever not owning a car again. You, until, you can I move back, a... until I move back out of the city. Yeah, at that point... Anyway. Um, the idea of constant moving is a financial drain. Yeah. There's no point in moving more than once or twice. I if mean, you move more than once or <clears throat> twice in your life, you're only throwing more of your hard-earned money away, and you're not getting anywhere where you should be, which yeah. is saving money instead of wasting more money. Well... If a job opportunity tells you you can make more money in Cincinnati, Ohio, but that means you move from... Milwaukee to Cincinnati, how do you know the cost of living is cheaper or expensive there than where you live now? Yeah. And offset that, are you going to be making the same amount after taxes, cost of living, and whatnot? You may be making the same amount of money there as you are currently here. Yeah. The, the point made is only move to where you only want to move in personally. Uh, never move for a job because eventually it will dick you in the end. No, I'm not. Um, and if you're expecting to stay at a company for long, even if you stay at a company, kind of like Cooper Tom, eventually they want to get rid of you because you cost way too much for your services. Yeah. So they're going to find any reason to get rid of you. It's not a good idea to not only stay at a company for far too long, but if you move to a far away location where you're not a local from, I mean, between Milwaukee and Chicago, we're all native to this area anyway. I've, yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with Chicago to a good extent. I think it's a great city. I wouldn't want to live in it. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to afford to live there even with roommates because... Do you feel like I'd like to? I still want to pursue my voice acting career. Oh, yeah, certainly. Somehow. And, and that would mean moving down to Chicago being the closest way you, you can do that. It also... Just saw auditions for commercials and, you know, ideally animes, cartoons, um... CGI movies, whatever. Whatever presents itself to me would be closer. You know, that's why I would like to do it. Actually, why I would like to do it is just because I want to be around a large community of LGBTQ. Again, Milwaukee has disappointed me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. In what way? In every way. Explain. Explain. There's nobody. Every time I've gone downtown and hung out at a bar, one time with Matthew Rossman, uh, one time, a couple times by myself, uh, it was just sad. Sad. And when was this? During the winter months? No. Over the summer, spring, summer last year. Uh. Spring, really. 
Spring of this year or spring of last year? This year. Well, well with, with COVID. Yeah. This was before COVID, though. Before, Just before we got hit. So I guess that would be considered winter still. I would say... So I probably went during an off-season. The LGBT community, well... I mean, we've been to Pride together out here, and Pride was huge. In Milwaukee? Yeah. Yeah, it's just as big as Chicago. I mean... I don't think it's bigger than, as far than as Chicago. The, as far as the ratio percentage, anyway, I'm sure it was just as big. Considering that M Milwaukee hosts the world's biggest music festival on the planet, well, the world's biggest... Uh, Pride Fest in Milwaukee is huge, and it goes on I mean, all we, weekend. We had fun. We had a lot of fun at Pride Fest. And you know what? You'll see everything. When did we do that? Was that two years ago or three years ago? I can't remember. See, I think... We suited. I think because of the pandemic, it's giving a false image of what it is, of what it could be. Because when I went with uh, my friend and Tracy... And I wish this would end. I would say... I think you're going to be disappointed anywhere as far as a community is concerned. Furry, LGBT, whatever community as in far as a hobby or a lifestyle or just a community in, in general, I think you'll be disappointed in any way you look at it. Um, because of COVID. Well, not just that, but just in general. Because um, I think the Milwaukee community is pretty vibrant as it is like Brady Street is all L is literally the biggest collection of LGBT community living in one spot we literally own Bradley Street that is literally where most of all the community to live is in that area and you know what it's quite nice it's just with COVID I'm afraid you're just seeing a lack of activity which yeah the same can be said right now about chicago oh, i'm sure because this this past june did did not happen of both of pride fests i would love to go actually i want to experience a bar i want to experience nightlife in chicago during the pandemic just probably uh, totally dead well no 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 i guarantee it's not dead it's irresponsibly busy Irresponsibly busy, but it, just a sea of masks everywhere. All you see is masks. I still wouldn't go. With the occasional couple kissing. I still would not go. You you cannot pay me to be in a crowded... I would just like to see for myself... I'd rather... No, I would rather see... I would rather have you take me to go to Chicago to see the LGBT community at night... Either before or after pandemic, but I think after pandemic, things could probably change slightly. I'd like you to see it before him. You would have loved it. My God. But the Milwaukee one? Like, so, as, as I mentioned before, my, my friend Tracy and uh, Katie went to, went bar hopping. The only time I ever went bar hopping was yeah. two, three years ago yeah. in the cold. And you know what? I think we went through three gay bars. Yep. Yeah. And they're and all in that same intersection, or that same vicinity, within a block and a half radius. It was packed. Yeah. Totally packed. The first one was Andrew Christian mm. Underwear Competition. Oh, yes. Among ordinary people. Andrew Christian. Under ordinary oh. random patrons. Shout out to were, Andrew Christian. Which were selected to wear his underwear on the bar stage. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Talk talk about it being stereotypical. They all looked good. Of course. It's my Andrew, friends and it's Andrew Christian. So. My friends wanted me to go up on stage, and it's like, ah, uh, no, I'm not that confident yet with that. Oh, you would have had fun. People would have loved you. Oh my God, me, me and my tum. My, You're adorable. My you would my have, husky tum. They would have loved you. I'm a husky husky. Doesn't matter, because people love all types. But anyway, the point... You don't need to be like this perfect swimmer's build. The point that I'm making is that I think you're getting the wrong impression of the Milwaukee. I'm sure I am. Uh, and that could be said with anywhere, is that right now... It's the wrong time. It's the wrong time to judge. And yeah. you've only been here officially a year. Yep. A year, I don't and, a year and three weeks. 
I highly doubt Chicago is any better right now. In, yeah. in fact, is it so big? And Chicago has its own um, res restrictions mm -hmm. where they don't want people from out of state to visit in Chicago. Oh, well, I'm coming. Um, Chicago. I highly, and if there are bar scenes still out in Chicago, I don't know if it's smart or stupid, but. Stupid. Because I don't know of many bars that are, well, that are open. I don't see them full every night as they used to be. So prior to any sign of COVID, before all of this mess started, you and I bar hopping in Chicago would have been a blast. I think that would have been. Is, I, We're talking. Boys Town. And we were in Boys Town that one time. Eight blocks down two different streets that end up coming to a, a, an intersection at one point, crossing. Mm -hmm. uh, eight blocks. Uh, maybe like three blocks one side and eight blocks the other. So a total of like 11 blocks of bar hopping with anywhere from four to six bars on each block. Sometimes just one, depending on where, where it's at. But definitely a total of well over 15 to 20 gay, gay bars. bars and clubs to go to. That's just within one spot, what you said, Boys Town. There's another strip further north and further west uh, of another three or four blocks of, of bars uh, where my friend Tim Johnson works. Shout out to Tim Johnson. I just think... You're probably giving the wrong impression. Of I'm sure I am, and I'm 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 beyond that. You know, I, I want to see it as it is normally. Because I would have still loved, even if we're both not together. Yeah. It would still be fun to go to Milwaukee's Pride Fest because we only did that once together, and that was 2016. Yeah. I went 2015, 2016, and I think. I may have gone in 2017 or 2018. I totally forget which. And then that was pretty much it. You did. I think you did. And No, no. We both went a second time. I think mm -hmm. we went in 2017 or 2018. No, I've only been to Pride here with you once. Okay, so that was 2016 because that's the was, only time. We, we, we suited. Yep. We did go with... Um, Rusty. And... Zip Zap. And, I, love, uh, I love Zip Zap. And... Uh, Speck and Takani. And, uh... No shout-out to them. Uh-oh, Sour. Sour Cap. But Sorry. We, we uh, won't get into that. Uh, um, shout-out to Zip Zap. I love him. He's a sweet guy. But, um... And then we all kind of suited together, and then we kind of got separated, and then we just did our own thing. Well, once she took off her head, a good 10, 15 minutes into it, like, why even, <laughs> why even wear the fursuit at all, Rusty? My God. What a dingbat. <laughs> Sorry, judging. Not judging, but judging. Why he, even wear the suit if you're just going to take the head uh, off? He is, he, he's a very sour loaf, but we were actu we actually suited, I think, at mm. least a good hour well, in the June heat in Wisconsin, which isn't much compared to other parts of the country. But it was enough. But... It's not so much the heat, it was the humidity. It was a very humid day. I don't care because it was worth it. It was a great experience. People loved us. Oh, yeah. And it was a great experience. I, I had an absolute blast. I think we suited there for a good four hours. Total. Until the fireworks happened, and I knew that we were going to be fire combustible, so we left just yep. to make sure that we wouldn't catch on fire, which yep. we would be flaming gays, but... Yep. More adorable and scarred forever. Yep. Yep. Um, Don't need that to happen. I mean, really, Milwaukee Pride Fest, the three times I've gone, because I, th yeah, I think I've I've gone, yeah, yeah, I, I, I did go a third time, although yeah. this is without you. Yeah. It was with someone with, someone with the uh, Milwaukee furry community. Mm -hmm. I totally forget who, I'm sorry. Although I doubt they're really listening in anyway. Um, I went in 2017 or 20, 
it's got to be 2018 or 2019. I forget exactly which. It's been so long. And, you know, that community is really, really, really a lot of fun. This is, it's just, it's a shame that this pandemic really halted everything to a complete stop. Yeah. Um, and I'm not trying to sugarcoat this particular city's community because I refuse to sugarcoat things because it's not perfect. No, none is. None of them are. But I feel like your past year here, much of it has been in 2020. And it's been a total shit show so far, which, again, doesn't help. I mean... I mean, Chicago, the one time where we went to Pride Fest in Chicago was a lot of fun, too. Yeah. I will say prior to COVID, and obviously prior to us breaking up, um, we had some good times. I got to experience game nights. I got to experience anime nights. Yep. Earlier in the year. Yep. Although poor poor Poos kept sleeping in through them because he wakes up so early that... Oh, God. I fell asleep on anime nights. Yeah, it was almost better off if, if he just loafed at home. Although that's why you have... Although that was... Actually, no, you had Wednesdays off, and that was Anime Night Monday. Yep. Um, so, and I don't know if that was before you switched to Wednesdays and Saturday. Uh, yeah, Wednesdays and Sundays off. I mean, it was basically, I went from just random schedule to a set schedule. Right. And Although, because my body is so used to that now. Yeah, pretty much within about an hour of us being there. And these things would go on for like... At least two hours. Two, two, three, two, hours. three four hours at sometimes. Um, depending, on how fall, long this, depending on how long the series was. We you would fall asleep within the first hour. And then at that point, it's like, well, you're, you're, you're tired. I am not going to wake you up because you need that sleep more than you need to watch a show. But then also drove the point of, he's here, he wanted to do anime, but he falls asleep anyway. I'll just let him do what Cat needs needs to do. I mean, when, what time did it start? 7 o'clock? I forget. It's been so long now. 6, 7 o'clock, right? It was yeah. somewhere between 6 and 7. Which is rough because I go to bed at, between 7 and 8. Yep. So you... So, so I it's, literally it's have an hour. I literally had an hour, maybe two hours max of life left in me before. Yeah, at that point it was just it was just unfair because I'd have to wake you up to leave anyway. Right. Well, yeah. And then fall asleep later on, and then you go to work the next day or something like that. Yeah. I mean, considering that I wake up at three in the morning. Yeah, I I think, get there by four o'clock. I think that was asking a lot from you. Um, Knowing that you're in that really, really rough schedule, that your body's like, okay, loaf time. Yep. And that's why I never woke you up in any one of those days, because it's like, well, you're tired. I'm just going to let you sleep, because that's more important for you to do than it is to watch a stupid anime, which right. well, a lot of them were good. Sometimes they were good, sometimes they were stupid. Yeah. Which is funny. It brings up a point to me, too, because I think about this now in my old age. I consider myself old now. Yes. Your brother can loaf like the best of them. My Oh, yeah. And he's young. I mean, he's not 20, 21. And, and, and he's, he and, and he's a polecat, so he's like a baguette loaf. He is a baguette loaf. Polecat. A shout out to Amico. Hello, bro. He sometimes listens. Sometimes he listens, and sometimes he's actually here, too. Yeah. He actually listens to my pandemic talks on my YouTube channel. Was he really? Oh, that's yeah. right. I remember hearing you mention him that. Yeah, he actually in enjoys those the most, so. A shout-out to the rest of my channel. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, this year has been a loss of so many things. For me, it was car shows, fur cons, fur meets... And not just for you, for everybody. Well, I'm just saying for me, for me in particular. Personally, where yeah. 
in your case, again, meets, cons. Um, in everybody's case, meets, cons. If you're furry, yeah. I mean, yeah. And even the incidental normie, accidental normie at a, at a meet that gets the random interaction uh, with furries and loves it. Yeah. Because every once in a while, we wouldn't end up interacting with a normie at a meet, and they loved us. Yeah. They don't see that we're hurting anyone. Right. As it should be. Uh, we need to get back to that. I hope we do soon. I think, oh, okay, so to quickly go into this, let's talk about the future of everything. Now, fur cons, fur meets, they will happen. They'll, they'll take time, but that will only happen when everyone else either gets vaccinated or I don't know what. Yeah. So, now that in mind. There was an interesting point being made today that I heard... And this gets stupid, but I also believe it because people are this dumb to believe into something oh, like that. I have something too, yeah. So during this pandemic, uh, there's two or three companies developing a vaccine, which are in the 90 percentile range of effectiveness. There might be Democrats that will not take it because it's a Trump vaccine and they don't trust it. <laughs> Then also other people are going to say it's a Biden vaccine because it's now under both Trump and Biden. And now that Republicans may not want to take it because it could be a tracking device when you take a. <laughs> so you have to really wonder, yes, we have a vaccine. No, it's not going to be widespread because you still need to take time to produce some. You cannot mass produce a vaccine like a Ford Model T. You just can't. That stuff has to be high precision in terms of dosage. If you sure. fuck that up, you can have too much of the virus, and it could potentially get you more sick and well, kill you. Isn't that what it is anyway, is, is a strain of the virus? But a certain percentage. Okay. However, too little, and it doesn't do the job. Too much, and it'll get you sick anyway and potentially kill you. Right. If you mass produce it too fast, you undo that, and... The vaccine is up in the air in terms of effectiveness. So we're looking at pre-pandemic vaccine production, which is normal production rate, which could take up to a year to finally finalize enough vaccines for everyone to take. Yep. Then you also have people who don't want to take the vaccine, both Democrats and Republicans, who fear it's a Trump virus or a Biden or a Trump vaccine or a Biden vaccine, people are going to withheld taking the vaccine knowing for that alone, which is stupid. Then you also get the people who are anti-vaxxers that will refuse to take a vaccine of anyway. Course. We're looking at another year. I know that 2020 is going to be a bust on those reasons alone because you know what? Americans are that stupid to believe in stuff like that. He... Kurt Ann is now checking his phone on vaccine information. See, here's my thing. <clears throat> okay, I have a question. Because I may have an answer. The common flu has been how long? Decades. Know. Oh, yeah. How come they never came up with a vaccine for that? A vaccine for Here's the answer. For, the, for flu... Make Just some money. regular flu. Because <clears throat> there are too many different strains of the flu. That That is absolutely true. Okay. That's absolutely true, yes. Right. And there's been multiple strains of coronavirus at this point. Influenza is one strain, one singular strain of the flu. Yeah. They still have not made a permanent vaccine because for it keeps influenza. The, yep, from nineteen. People still get it. Yep. So, hello. I'm sorry. And I'm not a naysayer of vaccines, because certain vaccines do work for certain things. But yep. when you're talking about a flu, it's only going to cover that one strain. Right. And they can't stop it. I mean, it, 
So actually, so if I'm getting exactly what you're saying, coronavirus is going to be part of our future, except yeah. it'll it's just going be to... included in all the rest of the viruses considered as the flu. You know what? You make a lot of sense in that retrospect. Yes, that sounds pretty reasonable in that. And it's not something you can ever stop people from getting. People will always get the flu during, quote unquote, flu season. Yep. You know what? That actually makes a lot of sense. This will be a perpetual issue. It's just probably by the time 2022 arrives, we won't see coronavirus as a killer virus, but more so right. as just the another flu. flu. So this is why I hate our news media. They perpetuate this. Yeah. You will die sensibility to this flu. Yeah. It is just another illness that we have to cope with. Yep. You take the necessary steps. You take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You do whatever it is that you need to do for yourself to stop from dying from this. Just like people die from the common cold because what? You can get pneumonia yep. from the cold. The common, the common cold, which does not have a what? Cure. Mm -hmm. You can't cure the common cold. I now have two questions for you. Sure. And I'm going to answer them after and you I'm as well. I'm just trying to act as the voice of reason. I'm not a naysayer of any of the things that uh -oh. they're saying. I'm just trying to be a voice of reason. All right. I, re I remember one of them now. Go ahead. Do you think wearing masks are going to be part of our social future from now on? Yes. I think so too. And I think that they perpetuated this for that reason alone. Yep. Because Japan has been doing the mask thing since 2000. No, oh. Before even, probably. The 1920s, since Blue Fever. Yeah. One of my best friends that I, uh, or one of my friends who happens to be a YouTuber, <clears throat> moved to Japan in 1999. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a very common thing. At first, he was, it was strange for him because he would go on subways and public transits and all sorts of different uh, places, stores, and you would see these people wearing masks. Not everybody, but a very large percentage of people, especially in public transit. And in Japan, it is literally considered just a common courtesy. Whether you are sick or whether you are uh, possibly scared of getting sick. Ah, uh, the Poose is playing upstairs with one of his toys. Oh, yeah. He's absolutely going nuts with it. Ah. Uh, so. But did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. They have implemented this as literally a common basic current, uh, common courtesy between people. Yeah. They're doing it for the good of society, not for individualism, which in this country right. is a huge thing. We have to get over that. We have to get over that. Just get used to the idea of having to wear a mask in public. Individualism should only exist at home within your family. Right. However, once you're out in public, societal reasons overcome individual reasons. I will say, in my own personal opinion, the more you don't subject yourself to essentially other people's germs, the less immune you become to them. And this is just me talking in my own personal experience because I played in dirt when I was a young kid. I did too. Um, you know, and I was exposed to all the germs and everything else, all the, um, what do you call it, bacteria, mm -hmm. bacteria. Huge. I'm a huge fan of bacteria because I love yogurt. I think you're going to be exposed to bacteria regardless in, in, in life. Right. It's just the way how you control. My point is there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. Yeah. I learned this in grade school. I learned yep. it in high school. Yep. I learned it in cosmetology school. Mm -hmm. There are two basic groups of bacteria bacteria that's bad for you and the bacteria that is good for you. You want to avoid the bad bacteria. You want to avoid the bad bacteria. 
but you also want to be exposed to the good bacteria because mm -hmm. the good bacteria helps your body to fight stuff. And that's why washing your hands too much can be a bad thing. Go. All right. Well, actually, washing your hands is not a bad thing. You're too much. Get... I'm just saying washing your hands too much can be bad. I don't know how much is too much. But anyway. 20 or 30 times a day. Oh, too much. I only wash my hands about four four times a day, and that's, that's minimum at, at times. So... Do you think companies are going to take people's sick days a lot more seriously from this point on? No. So 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 companies are going to put their heads in the sand. Yes. Because they think that profits being made is more important than people's health and safety. My company doesn't even accept doctor's notes as excuses from work. That's sad. Like like in my case in my company I because get, it's too easy to get a doctor's note, apparently. That's so stupid. Yep. I get ten personal days, not a year, but I can accrue up to six, add in another four for the upcoming year to get ten. Yep. However, because with what's going on here, people are, are now seeing coronavirus as this thing that, regardless if you're red or blue, it does not matter. It, it will find you, and you know what? All the people from my company that have gotten coronavirus and have come back, and every single one of them came to my boss because my boss would ask them how, how it was, yeah. like it was a football game or, or something. <laughs> they said they were barely able to survive. And one of them was an overly fit individual with muscles like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That doesn't matter. And that does not matter. That doesn't matter. There was a guy that starred in a, I forget the name of the TV show, it was a, it was about Spartans. The guy was hugely fit. He was a fitness junkie. Got cancer and died in six months. Yeah. It, strength, I don't care how healthy you strength are. Strength and young. It, physical, mental strength and age does not matter. You're going to catch whatever is out there, and it does not matter. No. Just because it attacks young people is because school opened up. That's the only reason why people say, well, really, it's only people your age that yeah. actually get it. That's bullshit. Anyone can get it. Right. It's just the point that I'm making is companies know that, hey, half of their staff is sick. Yeah. Do they want to take things more seriously if they want to not only keep people on their roster, but, you know, people are not... Because, you know what? One thing that I've learned from this pandemic is is not so much now vacation days because I, at this point in, in time, there's not going to be a whole lot much to do in the foreseeable future because I mm -hmm. think this virus is going to be a part of our future and for the most part, we won't get this thing under control until 2022 anyway. Right, 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 right. I'm going to be looking at jobs on sick day or personal day benefits. Yeah, and pretty much, um, well, obviously how they handled the coronavirus. Right. But um, how they kind of handle that. Yeah. I, I, I totally forget half, I, I don't know, my short-term memory is going out of whack now. But pretty much, oh, and as being a essential workplace. Yeah. Because now you realize being an unemployment is not good because eventually that stuff runs out, which... If, which if you're... If you're unemployed right now, whether if you know it or not, you have until December 31st to find a job. Because at the end of the year, all states run out of their, if they haven't yet, they will be running out of their unemployment benefits by the end of the year. Unless sure. government does something to extend that. Money doesn't grow on trees. And so. you know what? There is no such extension possible right now. Because, of course, you know, transitioning of two presidents that don't get along. Yeah. There is no doubt that they won't do anything for it. Don't get along, at least in the public eye. Right. Let's be clear. Or personal eye. Who, who knows? You sparked something else in my mind that I have to get off my chest. Insurance companies and health insurance. Yeah. When you apply for health insurance, you are a perfect candidate if you are someone like me or you that does not have a predetermined condition. Yep. Exactly. Cause they will accept you in a heartbeat. Yep. Do you have heart issues? Do you have this issue? Do you have that issue? They go through literally Are a, you a whole, smoker? Yeah. They go through a whole list, 40, 50 questions. 
before they consider you a good candidate for their insurance. Or also what they say, a good risk. Right. If you have bad conditions, if you have predetermined conditions, um, they won't take you. They won't take you or they'll take you under certain conditions. At a premium. They, they call it a premium. At a certain setup premium, um, which is unfair. Oh, yeah. Uh, that doesn't. That shouldn't even be uh, a thing anymore. They're supposed to cover for that shit. Yeah, and you know what? They don't even. They don't even cover people no. who are under worse conditions than we are, and yet they're the ones that they get. Um, they're the ones that get rejected. Yeah, they're not being taken on by their uh, services because, because they, they need the help. And not only that, but that, that will cost them money, the insurance yeah. company, which they don't want to do. Yeah. They want as many health people. Oh, my God. See, they want healthy people. Corporations don't want to give anyone sick days because they want as many people on board as, as they can. But yeah. stuff like this happens where all of a sudden, if you're sick, you're out for two weeks. What yeah. are you going to do? Nothing. Someone's got cancer, and you know what? What are you going to do about that? You can't do anything until they fight it or you fire them. Yeah. And even still, that's pretty evil as as it is, but they don't want to cover them anyway. Yeah. Health insurance companies would rather take on the most healthiest people out there, Always. but also ignoring those that are absolutely suffering, that absolutely need it. And those are the same people they would want to help insure are the same people they don't want to insure, which is an oxymoron. Yep. Which pisses me off because, yeah, do I want health insurance? Yeah, for the possibility of the unknown, you don't know. However, me right now, as of right now, I'm very healthy. Yeah. I'm doing okay. I don't have any health issues. Right. However, those who are suffering through incredibly tragic health issues. If that you tell them you're a cancer survivor, you can forget it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can absolutely forget it. They will not accept you. And which is a shame. Or you'll be accepted at a, definitely a different premium. So people see you as a leech on society because you've got issues. But the problem is, you know what they say about a pack of wolves? A pack of wolves is as strong as their weakest link. Yeah. And you know what? They all work as a team. Yes, they do. And if the insurance company, which sees... The strongest wolf is where you should really be. Everything else is all secondary. That's not how you build a society up. No. You help the ones who absolutely need help. Yes. And you know what? If you're going to toss them aside into yesterday's garbage, our society does not stand a chance against what's going to happen next. Yeah. Whether if it's social, economic change, there's no way all these people are going to last through it. And that's right. the unfortunate bit about that, Cause this which is, pisses me off. This is not the end right here, folks. No, I hate no. to tell you, COVID, there'll be something worse coming up. Much worse. I mean, honestly? I mean, you know, Obama called this. Oh, yeah? Within his first term. I'm stealing a beer from you. Go ahead. I'm not, I'm not drinking. I'm, this wine is... I'm actually just finishing it up now. Super buzzed. A beer would probably put me under the table or under the dinner tray. Obama called the shit out within his first, I think within his third year. He said he wanted something in place that would take care, cover us in case something happened. Mm -hmm. He knew this was going to happen. Yeah. They all did. I think a lot of health officials predicted what could happen if an event like this would happen would cripple not only people but also the economy because once you take people out of action from those jobs forget the economy oh yeah yeah economy is gone the economy is gone it is pointless it yeah. is deaded it is deaded um or no, let's say for no another amount of money from dada will help bring the economy back. Exactly. And you know what's also an, another um, another subject that we can see over the horizon in the next 10, 20, 30 years yeah. that I see as not only just a human issue, because, of course, 
the health issue is always there. It's never mm -hmm. going to go away. However, there will be another issue that you and I most certainly, especially my brother, because he's, well, he's only seven years younger than, than I am. <clears throat> he might... He may last a bit longer. It's the autumn. It's the. Um, it's the industry, automating, jobs to make yeah. more money because they don't have to have as many people. Back in the 1960s, an average, General Motors or Ford Motor Company plant employed anywhere from, 40,000 to 60,000 people on three shifts seven days a week you know the average GM plant hires only about 12 to 1600 people on same three shifts seven days a week and even union jobs can't even save all those jobs and union the idea of unionized labor is is to help keep democracy as honest as as it can and eventually, union jobs will eventually disappear because even they can't fight this stampeding future of automization. There's going to be a point to where we won't have jobs for anyone in the next 20, 30 years because there's going to be so much that's going to be automated by companies. Oh, yeah. They want to make as much money. This, we are living in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's not so much dog eat dog in terms of competition. It's the unfair competition of companies versus the people. Not mm. so much companies versus companies anymore. Yeah. At this point, it's now it's unrestricted monopolies absolutely terrorizing really the people they depend to buy their products. And you know what? They still don't care. Walmart. Walmart. Um, pretty much any manufacturer. Literally any corporation, any institution is not your friend yeah. whoever said that corporations and companies are people I want lined up against the wall and shot because yeah. you know what corporations do not feel what it means to lose a breadwinner in a family corporations that, are a money-making machine yes they're heartless they're cruel they don't care about your feelings they don't care about your house mortgage they don't care about your pre your your, your pre-existing health conditions they don't care a single thing about you so as long as you make the money. They don't even care about the customer base. No. Let alone the employees. They think their employees and their customers are idiots anyway, and their clients think the same thing about that same company. Yeah. Um, here's something else I had to bring up. I had to bring up because you sparked this in my head. Um, social, social Security going away. Within our generation, yeah. Um, they have spark this fear in people's minds especially the older people yeah that it's going to disappear that that insert name of party here will take it away this cannot happen i'm not saying that it shouldn't happen it cannot happen because you me everybody else that pays money through their job, through their employment, taxes and whatnot, is paying into your own Social Security. Yep. It's what you put into it. It's what you put into it. So it cannot be taken away. I'm sorry. This it is can be subsidized by the government. It could be, but they can't. They, if they did that, there would be such an uproar. Because you're literally stealing money from people that have worked hard for oh, it. Oh, you mean in the sense of government taking money from Social Security? Right. Okay. And because not just taking money from it, taking the money from it and then wiping it out, getting rid of it, saying there is no Social Security that, anymore. That literally means we're back in the 1920s where whatever you save is all that is left. Right. Which means families, like before Social Security... Three generations of fam we were literally very much like any other nation on the planet where yeah. three generations or more yeah. will live under the same roof. Yeah. Your grandsons or your grandchildren, your children, very grandparents, so. and potentially great grandparents are living under the same roof. And you know what? That could happen again. Yeah. That can happen where um 
literally once social security ends you're now depending not just on individual families living alone you're going to have to live together to help support yeah. each other the problem with that is there's too many people older mostly yeah. that depend on that money yeah that they have paid into their social security baby boomers to live off of that for the remainder of their years yes so you can't take that away you Especially would, if it's your political base. You look at how many, how many um, retirement homes do you drive past in your towns? I you see know, them pop up here and there. Three, four, five. And and imagine, that's in a year. Imagine there's fifty to ninety people living in each one of those. Every one of those that? people is li is depending on Social that money. Social Security. To just to get by, you know, because the rest of their money is going towards paying for their care. Any money from Social Security is paying for their food, um, anything else they need to continue to live as long as they have. And it's um, not just that, but they also come from a great generation of labor where their companies offered pensions. Yes. That for both of us, and you're much older than I am, yeah. and you would think someone much like... Much older? Don't say it like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a bit older than you. I'm sorry. <laughs> the idea is it's that okay. you and I, as far as us in the workforce, yes. we don't work for companies that offer pensions. Yes. You can don't. put into a 401k, Yes. but that's optional because it's a lot of people... It's not the same as a pension. No. Companies back in the day would offer a pension. Whether if they exist or, or not, they still have to... That's what Fred and Carol are basically living off of, Fred's, Fred's pension. Which he, which of course is firefighting, if you're not familiar, Kurt Ann's dad was a firefighter for Aurora for many, many years. And because you're doing a service for society, of course, I am hoping anyone who's a firefighter should get a pension because you contribute. I already fiddled with that. You should contribute, or you should be getting a pension because of your contributions to keep society safe. Yes. In the sense that you can save lives from uh, house fires, whatnot, saving property. Silver Wolf, he does that. He so, does. He does. Uh, he does some sort of public service like uh, that. I forget. So, it's just with pensions with the older generation. They both have pensions and a social security. When we both retire, if we ever do... Shout out to Silver Wolf, by the way. We may only have Social Security, and we're not sure if it will even still be around at that time. It will be. It has to. Um, I would confident. hope so. I'm very confident that it will be. I'll, I would certainly like it, too. Um, it's, it's, just, um, it's just we're living in a very bastardized version of our country of what it could be. Yeah. It's just politicians are... And corporations, but I think it's more corporations are telling politicians what they want. Because whatever money they can still make off the system, they would certainly do it in terms of profits. Because much like certain individuals in our society, losing is not something they want to be seen as. They want to keep making money regardless. Right. Even if it fucks over its people, its government, its country, or the planet. Right. If they can make a final dollar on top of the earth burning into a charcoal cinder, they will do it knowing that they made it on top. I will say, you said bastardizing. Um, I may have. I will say more so than bastardizing, this is sensationalism. Yeah. Uh, getting people to react to and, what... And getting... And getting Sorry. And getting them to back their cause without yes. them even knowing, sensationally. Right. Sensationalism basically is, is getting people to overreact to what is being said between parties. Um, and that leads me to my other thing that I wanted to bring up. Uh, keep, keep going. There was a tweet on Twitter from Joe Biden. Uh, asking for donations uh, because uh, of supposed Trump's refusal to leave the White House. This is a scam. Uh, I don't know how else to say this to people. Um, 
I did some research. I looked it up. I went to the website. The lowest amount of money you can donate for this cause is $15. Their base custom amount that you can set send in is $5,000 that you can donate to Joe Biden to help move Trump out of the office. Let me just be perfectly clear to you people. This has never been a thing. As long as I've been around, and I've been around for 46 years, the American people has never been held accountable for helping pay the cost of money to move one president out and one president in. This is not our responsibility. These people come from money. They can pay for it themselves. They always have. And as far as I'm concerned, they always will. They have plenty of money. We're talking about dynasties of people. You know, from the Clintons to the Bushes to the Trumps to the even Obama. Uh, these are all people that come from billions of dollars. Money that I will not even see in my lifetime. So do not even consider donating money to this cause because it is a scam. The research that I did led me to a website with his name basically directing me to a nonprofit organization that is asking for money to help donate towards moving out one president and moving the other one in. That should not be our responsibility. It is not our responsibility. Never has, never will be. And it it's not like uh it's it's not like George Washington like ah oh, John Adams I'm not moving out like oh well let's get the man with the wooden horse teeth out. Sorry. That's not how democracy no. works, people. <laughs> We live in a democracy. We're like the U.S. is established on democracy. We we were the first constitutional republic ever in the modern yes. world, and we are a beacon of what can be. Yeah, governed by the people and what they want. So, doing this to us, making us fit the bill to move one president out and the next one in. That's that's not democratic at yes. all. Wouldn't that be a plutocracy or a klept, uh, klepto uh, something? Klepto something. I'm trying Klepto to think of which kleptocracy one. for sure. I know that we're an oligarchy. We have never, <laughs> we have never Had paid fit for fitting the bill to move one president out, and one president in. Yeah. Sorry if he refuses. You know what? You call your local police. You call every law enforcement. Uh, that works for the public, our taxes pay their salary. Yeah. So that's all the money you need right there. Yeah. You call them, they get his ass out, we move on. Yeah. Period. You're already getting our money out of taxes. A lot more than at once. And unfortunately, I get taxed more for my piddly wages than someone rich would, and while they pay good amounts, they have offshore bank accounts that they don't have to pay. Yeah. I call that unfair. Why would I have to pay for the transition of two political candidates or two political people yeah. to make something happen, which I'm already being taxed way more than I'd want to be. Yep. And I understand. We all are. We all are. I understand the reasons of being taxed. It helps society. Right. We're it helps maintain help. the infrastructure on society. It's sure. the roads that you use, the bridges that you crawl over, the plumbing, the sewage, electricity, power generation, whatever. Everything. It all benefits all of us. But yeah. when no one else contributes it, and the ones that really should, the rich who can obviously afford it, complain and piss and moan that they don't want to. There's a huge disconnect in everything about what this country is supposed to stand yeah. for. We'll always be a country divided. 
I'm sorry. We are always a, a country fact. for the rich and the powerful. Politics has set us up this way, uh, and they want us this way. They want us to be divide and conquer. Divided, divide and conquer. Yeah. And the first, um, the first modern politician to really understand that was Mussolini. Yeah. And he understood that if you divide and, and conquer, it's easier to rule a country. Yes. Th that country is now much different than America, what it is today. Maintaining the control over the people that live within your country. Because you only have half the country you have control over, and you pretty much make it easier to control the other half. When everyone has an independent mind on what they believe and what they feel and think, sure, it becomes harder to control. Yep. Which then, that means the individual populism is more pure and harder to, to control, and politicians fear that. So, of course, they have to be on their best behavior. Yes. When you divide and conquer... Sure. When, when, it, when it, in fact, when a candidate is, is running for office, they're going to say everything right, everything that speaks to you. Yeah. I'm going to promise you jobs. I'm going to promise oh, you health care. Uh, Biden, and I... And I'm I'm a fencer. I don't have any political mm -hmm. farty, party party. I'm a total any, centrist. I don't have any political party that I affiliate with. He made promises that no presidential candidate could ever possibly make: free health care for everybody, free college. Get out! What are you saying? Yeah. You're making empty promises. And the same goes against Trump. You know, he made, you know, um, you know, he's not going to raise taxes. He's not going to do this. You know, my my biggest issue, actually I lost track of my mind there. You were talking about free college and yeah, this and that. I was, I was going to say something else. Also to expunge. Now, I understand the student tax debt is immense in, in this country. But I don't think it's a good idea to have it totally eliminated because you know what? That's something you did that you wanted to do. You went to an expensive college. You should still at least pay that off. Yes. You can maybe get help through maybe a few subsidies, but beyond that, you as a majority should pay off your own debt as is because you know what? I got lucky for what I had gone through. Yeah. But do I really want to pay... Do I really want to pay for someone else who doesn't want to pay at all? Yet, yeah, it like free tuition is one thing, but when it's free tuition for someone else, but someone has to pay their student debt from years ago, that's not retroactive. That's not fair. If if it was made institutionally free education from the very beginning, that would be different. We'd be singing a different tune. Yes. Much like France, which France has free college tuition. However, in this country, that was never the case. And you tell a next generation of college students that their tuition is free. What about the people who have been in college 10, 20 years ago who are still paying off their college debts. Yeah. Is it fair for them? Because then all of a sudden they felt like they've been born in a wrong generation or should not have ever gone to college in the first place. It is really kind of an unfortunate mindfuck that, yeah, yeah it, it would be great to have these things, but the problem is you, you kind of shortchange the people who've already been in it through the ringer before. Yeah. Um, I would like to say, just to kind of bring this down a notch, because we've kind of gone way up there. Yeah, this is unfortunate. I mean, I'm glad we did not mention too many names. No. Although, at least with what's going on, it's it's nice to be a bit honest with what's kind of going right. on. I did want to say one thing. Uh, just to put a bug in people's ears. And ass? Possibly in their ass as well. Uh, if your parents are considering donating money, make them read the fine print of the website that it directs them to because it does not go to Trump. It does not go to Biden. It, go, it doesn't go to Biden. It doesn't go to Trump. I meant to say Biden first because uh, I have my whole theories on that as well. I feel like he's buying him out. 
Um, it goes to a nonprofit, quote unquote, organization. This is a scam, people. Make your parents, if they're considering this, make them read the fine print so they know where their money is going to. You do not want to become a human centipede. No. Read the terms of conditions. Read the terms of conditions. Read the fine print. Read who is benefiting. Read who, who this money is going to actually to. Yeah. Because it's not going to your presidential candidate. It's not going to your president elect. It is going to a quote unquote company, a non profit organization. Period. Could be a middleman anyway. Yeah. Uh, but to bring this down a notch, I wanted to just send a shout out to Hoosk's, Ma, Mother Hoosk's chocolate cookies that she made. They're fantastic. They have cocaine on it. They have cocaine on them, but it's okay. It's powdered sugar, really. It's, it is French cocaine, so it's uh, got mustaches in it. Long cats will breathe it, so don't breathe the powdered sugar because <laughs> you'll choke on it. I already did it once. Um, but yeah, fantastic chocolate cookies. If I can somehow get the recipe from her, which I'm sure she'll give me. I think, I, I, I even think that the recipe's upstairs. It's yeah. actually on a sheet. I'd like to put it out because I'd like to share it with people on my Twitter. Um, I think we should end this. I, yeah. have, to, I have to pee. We're almost two hours in. And That's I have, actually the first time we, we, we've done a long ep episode. But... I haven't peed for two hours. That's a record for me. I usually am, am uh, old old poos bladder. You have a traveling litter box. <laughs> I do. I do have a traveling litter Excuse box. Excuse me, and then you just squat down in a box. <laughs> in pardon some, me, sir. Pardon me, sir. Bathroom. I have to make the piddle. And then, and then a little bit of moving the litter. Scrape, <laughs> scrape, scrape, <laughs> scrape. And then pee, and then scrape, scrape, scrape some more. And then, and then you put on your white gloves, which become <laughs> yellow. Oh, no, it's about water sports now. Oh, no. You did it. Okay, I, I did it this That's you. I did it this time. Okay. At least we didn't talk about your... Never mind. <laughs> Let's end this. Oh, my God. Well, this has been another interesting episode of the Zooming Who's Podcast. And once again, I'm your host, Dustin Husky. I'm Kurt Ansar Poos. This has been episode 25. And we started since the first week of August. And 25 ep episodes in, I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> so, in, in this case, we'll catch you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.